first question is regarding the best procedure or the correct procedure for a Muslim to search for a wife. I believe the answer to this question is applicable to all the people of the world. And it does not only confine to the Muslims. The criterion is given by the Holy Prophet of Islam which uh, speaks of the person's religious views. They should be given importance. If somebody marries into a person, into a family, whose religious views are contrary to the religious views of the person and his family, then such a marriage is always likely to end up in disaster. Not only for the two families or the husband and wife, but particularly for the children which are born. So the Holy Quran Prophet warns, if a man belongs to any faith, and in this respect, atheism is also a faith. Atheists should marry atheists because both will be free to do whatever they like. And religious people of whatever denomination they be should marry into their own denomination. The second is mentioned as kufr. That is the compatibility in your views, your likings, your wishes and so on and so forth which are outside the domain of religion as well, outside the domain of religion. Uh, re domain of religion. Now this compatibility is ignored many a time and the first part is also ignored many a time with disastrous results. People go for money, people go for family backgrounds and uh, the so-called greatness of the families they want to marry into. And they think they will attain greatness by marrying into great families. This is false. They never attain anything. The greatness lies within the man and within the woman. And if they behave ideally to each other, if they are compatible to each other in every sense, that is their greatness. And the children they bear will have a bright future. So this is the advice which I render you if you are searching for a wife for yourself. Is that right? Thank you. <laughs> um, I think the two last questions are related. I shall ask both together. Both of them, right. Why are there so many different sections of Muslims and is the Ummah strong enough in Islam? Why there are sections? Because they must have deviated so far away from the original source of their religion, which is the Quran and uh, the conduct of the Prophet. As long as they, the two sources of religion remained intact, as if they were just two names of a single entity. There was no division in the Ummah of Islam in those early days. All the followers of the Holy Prophet were united into one. Despite their differences of opinions, they were natural. Every man has his own opinion, but he sacrificed his personal opinion on the altar of what he believed to be a divine teaching. So he did not care much for his personal opinion, and this created the Ummah as a single entity. And because God is one, so those who believe in God have to be one and they must express the belief of their unity in their behavior as a people. 
unfortunately what you observe in the world of Islam today is quite contrary to the image which I am presenting to you. So they must have been wrong. Their ideology could not be wrong. The original ideology I mean. Because the same ideology of the Quran and the Sunnah produced a united Ummah in the past which had all the potentials of progress. Now because they moved away from that oneness it shows their folly not that of the original teaching and as such they are suffering the consequences. They are a billion or more but all scattered, all disjointed working against each other and working against the interest of the humanity at large. So this is a very unfortunate situation, but uh, we have to admit this is it. Thank you. Both your questions are answered? Right. The next question is from Mr. Michael Nonahan, who is a Christian. Mr. Michael, yes. He yes. He asks two questions on uh, the Prophet Abraham. First of all, what is Islam's relationship with Abraham? Abraham is held in highest esteem among all the past prophets by Islam. And Abraham is taken to have created a revolution in the world of religion whereby his dedication to God and its sincerity is going to guide, was, was meant to guide the future of the entire world. He had two lines of progeny, one beginning from uh, Isaac and the other beginning for Ishmael. About both, the Bible give, gives a positive verdict that the progeny of both will be special and blessed. So in the first part, up to the time of the Holy Prophet of Islam, the, the first part of the prophecy, prophecy got fulfilled completely. Ishmael did not play any role in the destiny of mankind until that time, except for being the forefather of the Holy Prophet of Islam. So when the Holy Prophet appeared, then the second phase of these biblical prophecies began to be unfolded. And this is what we see today. The entire world lies in its destiny at the feet of the Jews, the Christians and the Muslims. If these three religious forces unite, the rest of the mankind will not mean anything in comparison to their influence over the world. So this is how we hold Abraham in our uh, beliefs as the father of the future of mankind. In the passage of time, we believe in the end only a co-relationship between these three major religious forces will determine the future of mankind. Thank you. Hazur, the second question relates to a quote from the Bible, yes. from Genesis, and he asked, what do you understand from the following? Abraham believed God, and God accounted it to him for righteousness. He asked, what do you understand? It's very clear and simple. I you don't need any explanation. <laughs> Is it by you? Again? This question? Yes. You see, God only cares for righteousness in man. Not about his blood relationship or